They say you always remember your first time. Oh my god. I was 28 years old. I wasn't looking for it. It just happened. In the streets of Beijing, no less. I mean, I was nervous at first. I'd never tried anything like it before. But from the moment it touched my lips, I was a changed woman because that was the day I tried my first ever donkey burger and it made me feel things I'd never thought possible. I think we've got a new favorite food. I knew in that moment that one day I would venture to the source of the donkey burger, Hebei province, where they have a saying, in heaven there is dragon meat, on earth there is donkey meat. Yes, it may be three years since that first unforgettable bite, but today is the day I have arrived in Hebei province and I have one mission and one mission only, eat donkey burgers. I love my job, honestly. <laughs> so there are two varieties of donkey burger popular here in Hebei province. One from Hejian city, which is rectangular in shape, and one from Baoding city, which is actually circular. And since this is a food adventure, I'm going to be doing this video right. And I am, of course, going to be visiting these two cities and eating these two donkey burgers. So first up, I am here in Hejian city. I have a donkey burger store behind me here. So lu rou means donkey, and huo shao refers to the special bread that the donkey is packed into. Both these two elements, the lu rou and the huo shao, are integral when it comes to constructing the perfect donkey burger. I am so excited. Uh, I feel that same kind of excitement that maybe someone might feel, you know, going to Paris and having their first croissant of their trip. I am here in Hejian, about to have my first donkey burger. And it turns out this mention of croissant is quite timely because the way this huo shao is made kind of reminds me a little bit of the process behind making a croissant. I mean, I'm no baker, but I do know when it comes to making croissants, getting lots of layers into the pastry is paramount. Well, same goes here, except instead of using butter to separate the pastry, they use yo su, a dough mixed with oil. They lather a layer of that on top of the regular dough before rolling it up into a long roll. It's stretched, then separated by hand into little logs. And oh my goodness, would you check out those layers there? Each log is then rolled out into a rectangular shape, and this is the final product one once it comes out of the oven, it's puffy, crispy, spectacular. So now let's talk about the meat that gets stuffed inside that glorious pastry. Here in Hejian, donkey burgers are made using donkey that's been marinating for hours. So it's super, super tender, but it's also served cold and cut into super thin slices. An optional addition is this here. It's called menza. It's made from sweet potato starch. I love menza. So for me, it's a no brainer to add it. And there we have it, our Hejian style donkey burger, which I've also ordered with a side of lu zha tang, donkey intestine soup. I've ordered one to start. Uh, because I didn't know how big it was going to be. So the ones in Beijing, they're a little bit longer. This one is almost square. Um, and inside we have our donkey meat. We also have some munza. It gives it this, uh, this squishy and juicy consistency because if you can see that meat there, it can get a little bit dry. So it adds just a little bit of moisture. And something to know about this version of the donkey burger is the, um, the pastry, the bread itself, it's hot and flaky and the meat is actually cold. Well, it's, it's not cold, but it's just not hot. <sighs> Let's do this, guys. <laughs> it's so good. This is the taste I have traveled across the country for. My next bite here, you can see it has a big blob of munza there, so I'm excited to see how that tastes. <laughs> it's just a texture sensation. You've got that crispy bread on the outside. It's so deliciously flaky and crispy. I mean, check that out. I talked about croissants earlier, but it's very croissant-like, very layered. No, the bread is so good. They put it in this oven uh, right before serving, so it comes out all crispy. And then when you bite into it, you have that meat, which is actually cold. Um, so it has that contrast between the hot and the cold. And then if you get a, a bite with that munza in it here, it's really juicy and cold and a little bit salty as well. It just all over. I also decided to try some donkey meat on its own so I could try to describe it as best I can for those who've never tried it before and may be curious. It's so hard to describe because it doesn't taste like any one of the meats I've had before. It looks like it might taste like beef, but it doesn't. It's slightly gamey, but it actually has more of a chickeny taste than anything I'd say. It's really, really fragrant. It's super tender thanks to all the marinating that it goes through to get it to this state. It's a little bit salty as well. I'd say it's the perfect sandwich meat. The perfect, it's, it's meat that belongs between slices of bread, or in this case, very, very flaky, flaky pastry. I mean, check 
out that pastry. Well, that went quick. Now, okay, it's I like it. My second donkey burger has arrived and I'm gonna have this one with my soup. Do a little pairing here. First, I'm gonna just try the, the broth itself. Ooh, it's really refreshing. It's like salty and coriandery. I actually wanna try dipping a little bit of this into that soup and see how it tastes. Mm. It adds a little bit of extra moisture to this because after maybe your second donkey burger, you might start to feel it's getting a little bit dry in your mouth. So it's good for that. It adds a little bit of extra zinginess to it, but it does take away from the flaky pastry, which I guess is a, is a negative for that dipping idea. Um, let's just have a little bit more of this soup and actually go in with a nice big spoonful of donkey intestine. So the da in lu zha tang means miscellaneous or mixed. So it, it doesn't refer to any one specific variety of donkey offal in this, rather a mixture of a little bit, bits and pieces of everything. Um, but it does look like there's some maybe liver in here. I think there's some kidney as well. I think that might be skin. I'm not too sure. Anyway, let's give it a go. Mm. Tastes really good. I actually got a little bit of this in my bite just now, which I think must be skin because it gave just such a nice texture in my mouth when I was biting down on it. Very crunchy and springy at the same time. Mm. And another thing coming at me after having a few more spoonfuls of this is that soup is also very peppery as well. So another little flavor coming at me. Have to say, this is a very nice breakfast, great combination, loving this. I may even go for a third one, <laughs> seeing how full I'll get. I managed to rein in my self-control and didn't get that third one. Instead, I got myself onto a bus to Baoding, Hebei's other donkey burger capital. I have to say, on this trip, there's been a lot more trains and buses than usual. And while it can be tempting to pass the hours doom scrolling, I've made a conscious decision on this trip to use all this transport time to study German with Rosetta Stone, my anytime, anywhere German tutor. The reason why Rosetta Stone is an app I keep coming back to time and time again is because it works. Something about the way they pair the words and phrases and audio grabs from native speakers with pictures has the phrases sticking around in my head for a lot longer. It also has a pronunciation tool that gets you to practice speaking. Jetzt bist du ein Junge. Jetzt bist du ein Junge. But it's handy to know that if you're on public transport and you don't want to disturb your fellow passengers, you can easily pause this feature. So there's literally no excuse not to whip this out for at least a few minutes a day, no matter where you are. So if you're interested in trying out Rosetta Stone for yourself, now is the perfect time because by using the link in my description, you're going to get 60% off the lifetime subscription. So for 149 American dollars, which is actually discounted from 399 American dollars, you'll have lifetime access to the 25 languages that Rosetta Stone provides. So for whatever your holiday destination, whatever language you want to learn, Rosetta Stone will be there helping you along the way. Anyway, we've just arrived at Baoding bus station. Time to get out there and explore Baoding. It's one of the funnier things that I've done, you know, travel to two cities in one day for donkey burgers. But I am here and my excitement levels are rising and rising because I don't really know what to expect from this donkey burger coming up. Hejian, that style, I kind of knew what to expect because I've had that style many times before in Beijing. But this round style that we're about to have, I haven't had before. I don't know what's coming at me, but we're gonna find out together. We're heading to donkey stop number two. This place here was nearby my hotel and had good reviews, so I decided to check it out. And as soon as I entered the store, the most amazing aroma hit me from that hot donkey meat they're cutting up right there at the entrance. I have to say this version reminded me a lot of a rojiamo actually with that circular cutting board, the round bread, and I'm here just in time to see how that bread is made actually. So I'm currently seeing him making the dough for these donkey burgers and they employ a very very similar technique that we saw in Hejian at the first place. Except instead of being flattened into that rectangular shape, it's rolled into a ball. It makes me really curious about what the texture of these buns are going to be like because in photos that I've seen online they look really fluffy but seeing him make it like this I'm thinking maybe it's going to be flaky too. The buns are flattened slightly by hand then added to this machine that kind of resembles a massive toasted sandwich maker. Anyway once they've developed a little grill on one side they're flipped over and this part I could watch all day. He uses this wooden presser to press down on the buns and flatten them. This really tickles my brain for some reason. They're then down comes the sandwich press and they're left to toast for a few minutes. Now you may think they look ready, but there's still one more step involved to get them even more golden and toasty and that's popping them in the oven for a few more minutes. 
Okay, now it's done. And they go straight to the counter to be stuffed with donkey meat. Here's mine being made now. I also saw on the menu they offer a hua shao filled with that jiggly munza only. Just a munza hua shao. And I mean, how could I say no? Let me introduce my table of food right now. I have two donkey burgers here. Well, actually only one donkey burger. Uh, this is our balding style round donkey burger. I am so excited to bite into that. It's absolutely stuffed with donkey meat there. And I have also got one other hua shao which is just stuffed with Munza. And I think there's some kind of unwritten rule here. Well, who knows, they may have even written it down because it seems to be quite prominent. When it comes to ordering your donkey burgers, you need to have it with some kind of soup. It's not optional. I think it's like an actual rule. I was ordering my donkey burgers and originally I was just gonna go for the burgers. So I went in, I said, I want a Luro Hua Shao. I want a Munza Hua Shao. And the waiter was looking at me like, and? And, and looking at me as if I hadn't finished ordering yet. They've actually got an entire menu here of soup options you can pair your hua shao with. Starting off with xiao mi zhou, like a congee at the top. Ji dan tang seems to be quite popular, only three renminbi. And it goes down and down. This is what I had, the wonton. Only seven renminbi for a bowl. The wontons are filled with uh, pork and chives. But of course, first I will be going in with the donkey burger. Let's see. I'm excited to compare and contrast. Which one will I like better? Smells just as good, just as fragrant. Mm. It's actually really, really different to the Hojian version. One big difference is the meat inside is actually hot, which adds more of a burger-like kind of vibe about this. Another difference is those slices of meat are more like cubed and chunks rather than the thin slices that we had this morning. I really like that bread and it is very flaky, well not flaky, but it's very layered, which gives it just the most amazing texture. You bite into it and it's just fluffy and, and crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. Oh, it's really hard to pick a winner, guys. So I've also got these little bits of, uh, of chili here, dried chili, that I've been told I can actually eat alongside this donkey burger. I like it with that chili a lot. It gives it a little bit of extra saltiness just in the way that that chili has been prepared. It's quite salty on the outside. Um, it adds an extra crunch because it's dried chili. It's quite crunchy. And also a little bit of heat in there. I like that. I'm gonna keep adding chili to it. I really like that. I love my job, honestly. And now for the wild card, the hua shao filled with munza, that jiggly sweet potato starch. I'm either gonna love it or it's gonna push my love of Munza over the edge and it's gonna be too much. Oh, it's good. It's very good. <laughs> it's very, very good. I'm very glad I got this. I think they might prepare their Munza a bit different here because the taste, it's super, super savory. Um, the Munza at the other place, it was more jelly-like. This is slightly firmer. It has a bit more resistance to it. And yeah, really, really savory, which means it goes really well just on its own um, in that bun there. It was a wild card, but this was great. This was really, really good. And needless to say, you've got that amazing crunchy meat soft combo going on there. So texturally, it's really satisfying. It was a wild card, but this was great. This was really, really good. And now last but not least, our pork and chive wonton soup. In my opinion, they've missed out on an opportunity here to fill it with donkey meat. <laughs> but we're gonna try and see how it tastes. Oh. I mean, it's a very, very nice wonton. The skin is really thin. The pork is juicy. Chives, I mean, they speak for themselves. I love a pork and chive dumpling. It is rare to find chive in a wonton, I have to say. This may be my first time seeing it, but it works. And something I've really liked about the soups that I've had today, the two of them, is they're both peppery and very fragrant from all of the coriander they put inside and very refreshing. So I think, you know, when you're having your donkey burgers and that <laughs> Munza burger especially, <laughs> it can get a little bit overwhelming on like the savoriness and the saltiness. It is nice to have a little bit of a, a zingy refresher. But now it's time for the impossible decision. Which donkey burger did I like more? This one from Baoding or the one earlier from Hejian? And it's really hard because I like them both so much and they're both really different i mean if you're someone who likes a crunch uh you like that crunchy texture you're gonna like the hejian one this one is nowhere near as crunchy it does has have a crispy kind of one layer on the outside but this is more of a soft vibe when you bite into it if you're a fan of hamburgers i think you're gonna <laughs> prefer this one i also really like the size of them they're cute they're small you can eat one without being too full and if you want more you can always order another one um, which one do I like better? The thing is they suit different moods. 
If you're going through a heartbreak, for example, I would suggest you get your butt here to Bao Ding and get yourself one of these because it will fill the space in your heart that has been evacuated uh, with the juiciness of that meat and the softness of that bun. Although I do have to say, this is something best enjoyed hot. When it cools down a bit, those layers, it becomes a little bit more on the chewy side, a bit hard. But if you're on the beach on a summer's day in Australia, I mean, picking up one of those Hujian Luro Hu Xiao, I mean, it would be the perfect beach snack. But alas, our food adventure comes to an end. The tissue has officially come out to wipe my hands of the, all the oil. Um, and this is actually gonna be my last video on this trip that I've been doing um, for the last uh, two weeks or so. I, start, I started in Xi'an, I went to Baoji where I had all of the chili oil. I then went to Heyang and had the world's oldest, most ancient feng yan mian instant noodles. And then who could forget my stopover in Taiyuan where I found the most unique noodle of my life. And that has brought me here to Hebei province. I'm here in Baoding and tomorrow I head home to Changchun to edit all these videos that I have taken here. It has been so much fun. I have learned so much. I hope you've enjoyed watching these videos as much as I've enjoyed making them but if you are here and you've been watching my videos for a while I ask you please 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 subscribe I put my heart and soul into making these videos for you guys so if you have the time press that like button leave me a comment uh, or please follow me if possible but yeah that's gonna be it for me here in Hebei province sending you all great vibes and uh, I will see you next week on my channel bye bye